who would be the teams in college football that you would not want to see hot because they could wreak havoc on the rest of the college football landscape. I think Auburn has got to be in this discussion because Auburn just finished up locking in a top 10 class. No biggie. Hugh Freeze, a little bit, little bit chilly in here. The Freeze era is rolling. They locked up, they locked up a, a top 10 class in a season in which they won six ball games and lost to New Mexico State. Let that sink in for a second. And they locked in a top 10 class. That tells me that Hugh Freeze is, one, a dog of a recruiter, which we already knew. Two, that entire staff is crushing on the recruiting trail, and they have the same vision. They're all aligned there. Will Redmond, the GM, is one of the best, if not the best, in the whole freaking business. So let's get that straight. What happens if they start winning? What happens if in year two they go out and win nine-plus football games? I have a hard time believing that if you can lock in a top 10 class with six wins, if you get nine plus wins, I could see them being in the top five. That would not shock me in the slightest. They didn't have it last year. They didn't have it last year. And they took Georgia and Bama to the final drive. Bama more or less to the last play. They didn't have the roster talent to compete with those teams or beat those teams rather and get it done based on those results. But if they start recruiting at a top five, top 10 consistently level, Auburn and Hugh Freeze are going to be a problem in the SEC. They will wreak havoc on that conference, and it will be that they will be one of the big boys in that conference. Auburn will be all the way back. Let's just get that out there. Miami. We talk a lot about Miami on this show because I think there's just a lot of relevance to them right now. I mean, like kids are looking to go to Miami. Like kids are looking for a reason to go play in Coral Gables. I'm just saying that, all right? If they recruit the state well, Mario Cristobal, that is. If they, if they just put a fence around the state of Miami, as Howard Schnellenberger would say, or they just lock down the state of Florida, I guess, period, uh, they will win championships, both at a conference level and potentially at a national level. Cristobal is going to attack on the recruiting trail. We've already seen that. Multiple top 10 classes already. Now they need to win. And if they have success this upcoming season, I think the momentum that would create on the recruiting trail and the belief that would sell to these kids. If they go win the ACC or they make the college football playoff, or heck, if they do both, which if you win the ACC, you're obviously in the playoff, there's no more selling a vision. It is, hey, this thing is rolling. You want on? It's no, hey, come here, come be a part of this. We've been good in the past. You can sell that, obviously, but there's no more selling the trajectory. It's like, hey, we've arrived. You want to play for us? Again, the resources they have, they will play ball. They're playing ball at Miami when it comes to the NIL uh, sphere. The momentum they have and the momentum that would create would make them a problem in the ACC, and that would be that'd be a problem for the rest of college football if Miami ends up getting some leverage in the Sunshine State when it comes to recruiting. Notre Dame, Marcus Freeman is one of my favorite head coaches in the whole sport. I'll say that right now. There is a little bit of a stigma around Notre Dame. Big brand, good school, great education, but are they really like, are, they, are you really winning national championships at Notre Dame? If they get hot now, and this might be the year to do it, they got a squad to do it with what they did via the portal, grabbing Riley Leonard, grabbing Chris Mitchell and Jaden Harrison, two explosive wide receivers on the perimeter. If they get hot and they start winning at a high level, they have a coach who will hustle on the recruiting trail and I think the last thing that college football would want if you're recruiting against Marcus Freeman is he walks into a living room, walks into a high school and says, Marcus Freeman, head coach of Notre Dame Biting Irish, made the playoff last year. Made the playoff the year before. Made the playoff the year before that. Like if they can consistently sell that they are a habitual playoff attender and national title contender, that would, I think, change the entire optics around Notre Dame. And I think they would go from being in that top 10 range on the recruiting trail to being in the top five range. And that to me is what has separated Notre Dame from competing for, you know, being in the playoff to ultimately winning the playoff. Like the talent disparity has been the deal for Notre Dame. But if they can win and they get hot, Marcus Freeman will use that ammo to arm his roster with what they need and Notre Dame will be in that national title conversation. This is one that I think we're going to get some pushback on, but it might be the one that I feel most strongly about. Colorado, and I know it's only been one year, and I know they went 4-8, and eight, and I'm not telling you they're going to go win 10 games this year. In fact, I think making a bowl game is probably success for them in 2024. But if they get hot, that Dion effect is real. 
Now, I'd love to see him make some home visits. I've been very vocal about that. But there is not a head coach in college football with more charisma and who is able to maximize success on the field to his benefit. You don't believe me? Look at last year. Y'all, Colorado went 2-0. and 2-0. and They didn't reel off six wins, ten wins in a row. They went 2-0 and and had Colorado State come into town. Not Bama, not Georgia, not Texas, not this massive brand. Colorado State and college game day was there. Not because the game was supposed to be awesome, although it was. They were there for Deion Sanders. They were there for the juice, the buzz, the hype, all those things. And some people want to spin that as a negative when it comes to the hype around Colorado. I think it's a great thing if you're Deion Sanders. You use hype. You bottle it up. You take it on the recruiting trail. You pitch it to top recruits and say, you want to come play for us? Here's what we have to offer. National exposure. National attention. Build your brand while we win football games. If Colorado gets hot, we've seen what they are when they go 3-0. and They're all anybody wants to talk about when they go 3-0. and What if Colorado goes out and wins eight games, like Joel Klatt was saying is a possibility? If they get hot, the Dion effect will be 10 x in the future. I think that'd be dangerous, because I, I know it's it sounds funny right now, it's all jokes right now, but Colorado and Dion would be a factor in a lot of recruitments. And if he goes on, I'll just say, I'm, I'm, on, my, I'm on my soapbox, it's too late. If he goes out and does in-home visits, God bless you. God bless you, because Dion in the living room is an absolute problem. And we haven't even seen it yet, but I promise you, he would be a problem. Last team here, Tennessee. We've seen them have some momentum from that 2022 year going into 2023. The thing with Tennessee and the thing with me with Josh Heupel is like, brother, he's always going to recruit the quarterback position well. <laughs> he just, he is. He is. Say what you want about Joe Milton. They got Nico Imaliava, got Jake Merklinger from this last class, and George McIntyre, who's one of the top quarterbacks in that 2025 cycle. They become extra dangerous when they start winning, and then they can start to stockpile more depth at other positions. Because when Tennessee is able to add more talent at other positions, they've already done a good job of that. But when they provide more proof of concept and you get more buy-in on the offensive line, maybe you go land a David Sanders or maybe you're able to add more freak show defensive talent after seeing what James Pierce does this upcoming season. When you can add more versatility across the board with how you recruit at a top-tier level, then Tennessee has closed the gap on the Alabamas, on the Tennessee, or on the Tennessees, on the Georgias. That's really, I think, the big thing for me. I don't need Tennessee to recruit at the number one ranked class every single year, but I do need them to be within that top 10, to be within striking distance from a talent level on the LSUs, Georgias, Bamas, Texases, schools like that. That's not saying they haven't beat schools like that. I mean, folks remember the Alabama game like it was yesterday out there in Knoxville. But I just think if you want to consistently compete at the top level in college football, that would be how you get it done. You win games on the field. You attract more talent in the trenches and at other positions defensively. They're rolling. Rocky Top will be stuck in a lot of people's heads across the college football landscape. And not just because you're playing CFB 25 and your guy in Road to Glory is playing for Josh Heupel and Co. So, my don't let them get hot teams in review. Auburn, the freeze era, man, just getting started. Got a top 10 class with six wins. You get cooking now if they win more than that and they get in that nine-win territory. Miami, the U sells itself. If, they, if they're able to win, you're not pitching vision. You're pitching get on the bus with us. Notre Dame, if you win at a high level, they get hot. You remove that stigma. Marcus Freeman, he's a dog. He will recruit at a top level. If he has the ammo behind him on the field, game, set, match. Colorado, the Dion effect is real. We've seen it. But if they're able to really start winning games... Deion Sanders will maximize that for all it's worth, and they will be a problem. Tennessee, I just said, they recruit quarterback great. If they start winning and add talent at other positions, Tennessee will be a force. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.